Welcome to Real Community Talks, where real conversations with community influencers are made available to everyone. I'm your host, Matt DeSilva, and on today's episode, we have my guy, the predecessor to the job I'm in today, who I owe a lot. I probably should be paying you counseling fees, bro. Nah, no, I don't Chris about Opoku it. on the show today. Chris, thanks for being here today. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Um, so you know, he's gonna go, he's gonna take the whole humble route and you know, just be like, nah, 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 Matthew's doing his own thing, but when I first, you know, envisioned this podcast, I knew that Chris was going to be one of the very few that's going to be on it. And, you know, actually, I think, you know, when we talked about the idea for the show and I'm like, this is what I have doing. A lot of it is we do on the daily. Like, I'll come sure. to you in the office. We'll talk. We'll be like, this is what's going on with the youth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is what's going on in my personal life. So mm -hmm. there's very few people that I allow to speak into my life the way I let Chris do. It goes both ways, man. But um, I really see, I really seek his his, uh, his guidance and his counsel. So this is going to be a special one for me. Oh, so. shucks, man. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, man. So for those of you, for like the two, the two waste people who don't know who Chris is, Chris is a, are you ready for this? I guess so, yeah. A youth and communications coordinator. And like I mentioned, formerly in my job, so he was formerly a municipal youth engagement coordinator. He's a counselor. He's a recreation and leisure professional. He's a basketball a basketball coach and at one point was a soccer league convener, mm -hmm. a public speaker, a workshop facilitator, a program developer, oh, the all-to-go-around multifaceted, multi-talented guy in any organization. Oh, like if there's a problem, Chris is troubleshooting it. And most importantly... This is the most important one. Is an avid fufu enthusiast. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. So let's go with that. What is fufu? So fufu is a um, it's a Ghanaian dish. Okay. Um, in Ghana, it's made out of cassava and plantain, and you kind of mash it together, and you yeah. eat it with soup. There's a different types of soup that you can eat it with, but fufu is what I when because when we came to Canada, we came to Canada when I was one, and um, being my mom being new to the country, that's like one of the only meals that she knew to mm. make here. So like I ate fufu on a daily basis so like it just kind of kind of being something that that becomes a, a part of me right so like i think my old instagram um name was fufu or die fufu or die yeah and i kept that i think my snapchat name so that's but um oh wow, wow. yeah i'm all about fufu the real fufu that's king out here yeah that's me it's like it's like the it's like because i seen that video of you the man is like dipping his hands in the fufu fingers dripping with that sauce is that like the Ghanaian like roti and like curry or? um is i it, guess you yeah. can say so yeah i guess so we could be to that <laughs> but that was a different chris like that's when i was trying to You're trying to stun on the ground yeah i was trying to get i was just new to instagram i was just trying to trying to be a funny guy but i don't know if i'm still there he's matured up now yeah i'm mature but the fufu the fufu's still there still there i just had that yesterday you can't outgrow that no no no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. that's i was actually because you know with with all the guests i try to make sure we we get some food before we do the episode and i'm like i was actually gonna try to get something but i'm like i can't go to like some next ganyan restaurant because no. i know there's probably like you're like that kind of person who knows the the ganyan spots to be honest i don't eat food other than no. my mom oh yeah, that's my mom's making or i'm making it true food food yeah because i just well i'm i'm pretty sure everyone that like, ganyans can make food but if it's not like my it's mom's, not like mom's no. it's not the same i get it i get it yeah, yeah. so with that so you know everyone knows you um, you know, as this professional and all that you do on the daily. But for those who may not know kind of your background story, so what's your origin story? So who is Chris Opoku? Chris Opoku is a guy who, so I grew up, we came to Canada when I was one from Ghana. And um, we moved to Kipling and Finch in Rexdale. And we were there till I was, I think, 10. And then um, from there, we moved to another part of Rexdale by Armel Court. And I was there till I was, I think, 20. And I don't know, I seen a lot of things, went through a lot of things. Like my mom and my dad split up when I was nine. Then my stepdad came to my life, but that was another situation mm. that both situations weren't, weren't good. Yeah. It was my dad and my stepdad. And we went through a lot, seen a lot, and it kind of shaped me to who I am now and why I do what I do now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you 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 said you're born in Rexdale, right? Or sorry, no. You're, you're sorry. You were born in Guyana. Came to Rexdale. Yeah. So you lived for in Rexdale for how long? Altogether, twenty years. Twenty years. But like in two different parts of Rexdale. Mm. So like, uh, Kipling and Finch is where it's like, kind of like close to like the heart of Rexdale. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, seeing some things there growing up, and I, 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 I didn't really get into too much trouble back then. Yeah. 
I was, I was outside a lot because my, my mom and dad were working two jobs at the time. So me yeah. and my little brother are by ourselves for the most part. So we're outside all day, every day. Um, and yeah, we were there for a little bit. And then we moved to the next part of Rexa when I turned 10 because that's when my stepdad came to my life. So we moved to another part. And mm-hmm. then that was another issue. I think um, like some of my friends I have today, are the friends I met when I moved out there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so like two of my good friends I met over there and we still have friends still today. They're probably my groomsmen when I get married. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And um, it's almost like two different lives. The life that I had when I was at Kipling and Finch is different than the life that I had mm. when I moved over there. It's yeah. Two different journeys, basically. Yeah, so uh, you, you mentioned your groomsmen. We're going to get get into that a little later. Mm-hmm. But so like growing up as, you know, we talk about this all the time, you know, both being youth workers and, just not not looking past the idea that you know being a young black male is not always an easy thing and it might be a barrier and it might be you know a difficult road that you got to walk especially in rexdale like you know not to talk back about rexdale but like we live in mall like i live in malton rexdale is like right next to us they're they're like equivalents they're like parallels like everyone always says they're like you know like malton's mississauga's wasteland or rexdale's like yeah you know like the next jane and finch yeah. like, so how was it growing up in rexdale and you know um i feel like everyone who lives in the rex tries to put up a front mm. of, of trying to be not the, the guy that to mess with yeah trying to be hard or whatever but for the most part it it's okay as long as you don't bother anyone no one bothers you you're okay you're good, but yeah. if you're trying to live the life that you're not about people will check you on it and yeah. if you're not about that then you know things can happen right yeah, but yeah, if, yeah. if you stay in your lane and you kind of just do do you you'll be all right yeah yeah, yeah yeah for sure for sure so in terms of like you know um being you know coming from Rexdale and stuff like that now that you know obviously we'll get into the fact that you're you're a youth worker yeah. how do you feel like some of those experiences gave you kind of like they've kind of validate your story and your ability to serve youth um i think what i went through growing up i think my life would be different if i had someone there who kind of guided me and and Mm. everything like my mom is there but she was dealing with a lot in her own life so like i wouldn't have anyone to kind of direct me or tell me where to go or Mm. what not to do i kind of had to learn things by myself and i think that's what pushed me to to come back into this field so I can provide an opportunity for other youth not to make the same mistakes that I yeah. made, right? Because yeah. it wasn't until I was like 23, 24 when I decided that I got to stop, stop living the way that I'm living. And that's when I went back to school and, yeah. and and changed my whole outlook on life and try to be more positive and, and focus on the right things, right? For sure. Live like the way I was thinking before. Like I didn't think about my future. I just thought about right then and there. And mm. I only thought about things that weren't going to get me far in the future. Right? Yeah. I just, I don't know, it just wasn't smart thinking. Yeah. And I had no one to kind of tell me, yo, Chris, you need to think about this or you need to think about where you're going to be in the next five years. Right? Yeah. I just, I was just kind of living day by day yeah. with no real focus or anything like that. Mm. So the, the Chris that people see today, they would have saw you back then. Would they, would they think that you'd be a youth and communications coordinator? No, the no, no, no. Really? Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't a kid that was getting in trouble or, yeah. Or living that life but like i didn't show people who i really was i was just mm-hmm. i was a really laid-back shy guy yeah and um but i was really angry inside and i mm-hmm. think most people won't know that because i try to show up you don't really show it at all nah if you ask like my family they'll tell you i was a really <laughs> angry like kind of a miserable guy inside because yeah. just the way life was going for me at that time i just i wasn't happy right mm-hmm. but and I was out with my friends. I used that to like escape my reality and just kind of try to be. For sure. You know, but no. Yeah. So one thing that I find, it's it's funny, like the first, you're the fourth um, guest on the show now. Um, I find a common story between all of them and you, you touched on it a bit is either, you know, they've had a father and they left. There was a presence of a, a father, um, but not extensively you know one a parent passed away like yeah i've just noticed and i think both of us can agree like broken families is a huge like it's issue a, in, in our society thing. yeah so like you, you know you mentioned having a stepdad like how did that diet that relationship dynamic not having you know your actual father in your life having a stepdad come into your life because yeah. i know that can step on your toes and get you like yeah. frustrated. like that frustration could stem from that like how was that experience 
terrible, man. It's so, mm. it, it was, it changed me. It, it, like, so my, my dad, my biological dad, he was a good guy, but he had um his own issues, like he was an alcoholic and stuff. Mm. And he just didn't treat my mom the way she was meant to be treated, right? Kind yeah. of took my mom for granted. But I was young, so I couldn't really see the extent of that. Yeah. But um, when my stepdad came to my life, he wasn't there to be a dad. He was just he just came to kind of live with my mom. Mm. So from the jump, me and him never really got along. We just kind of just were civil with each other. Yeah. But when I got older, like when I turned like sixteen, seventeen, and I started to really, really see how he was. Like he was like um, um emotionally abusive to my mom. Like he wow. was just kind of like put my mom down and just kind of mm. like she she he took away all her friends. So like mm. she she only had him. Right. She yeah. had no social life and. He'd break her down and stuff. And when I got like 16, 17 is when I started to to see it. And I started to try to defend my mom. And once I started doing that, that's when everything started to go really bad between the two of us. Yeah, yeah. And then it, it affected me because I couldn't see anything. I couldn't. I didn't care about anything other than trying to deal with this situation, him and my mom and my family. Because yeah. I felt like I had to protect everyone from him. Mm-hmm. And it just, it just kind of changed or shaped my life going forward right yeah 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 and you're like so i'm sure you have a a number of kids that you know experience the same thing like what are some things that you tell them like you know let's say you know you got a 14 year old parents split up or you know let's say their father died young they got a stepfather in the house yeah what are some things that like how do they deal with that man i think it's different for each situation right it depends on how the stepdad comes into the situation right like for me my stepdad came in but he didn't. He didn't come in trying to build a relationship with me, and my mm. brother. He just kind of came in and was just there. He yeah. wasn't involved in, with us. He wasn't. He wasn't. A, he wasn't a dad. He was just person with my mom, right? Yeah. So like, we never really counted him as as someone who really like we can look up to or get advice from. He was just there. Yeah. And then so seeing that is, I don't know. So for when I talk to youth now, we're going through the same thing. Like I depend on their situation, like. If they're not even giving him, like, let's say he's reaching out, he's trying to to, to be a father yeah. for them, and they're not giving him a chance, then I, I speak to him about, like, you know, give him the benefit, the benefit of the doubt and mm-hmm. give him a chance. But if it's, like, in my situation, then, I don't know, you kind of have to address it as, as the situation is, right? Comes, yeah. Yeah, it has to come. Uniquely, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with that whole topic of, you know, broken families, broken relationships, you know, you're, you've been dating your girl for five years now, right? Yep, yep, so yep. how did that affect your view of relationships? And like, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, it, it probably left a bitter taste in your mouth, but now you're in, you know, the best relationship of your life. Right? Ever. You know, ever. you're getting getting married in the summer. Yes, I am. Right. So. um, So seeing what my dad and my stuff that did to my mom or how they treated her changed the whole way how I, I treat and respect women. Because I don't want, I don't ever want to put the person I'm with in the same position as my mom. Yeah. So with my, my fiance now, like I just, I focus on the little things, right? And I focus mm. on making sure that she feels appreciated. I tell her she's beautiful all the time, right? Like I want her to know that I really do care and, and I really do love her, right? And I and I try to show her that in, in my actions, right? And, and in my words. And I think that kind of shape, like I don't ever want to go through what, what my, like what my mom went through, right? Yeah. I don't want to, split up with her or split up with anyone and have like kids and then you yeah, know you want to make it work i'm gonna yeah. make it work yeah. yeah my mom even told me like chris like you have to break that cycle of wow. the broken families right because yeah. my mom went through it with her parents mm. and then i went through it with her and so she's like when it comes to like me and my brother she wants that cycle to stop like she yeah. whoever we're gonna marry make sure like that's the one right because yeah. the broken broken families it's it's it's, it's, an, it's a problem man it affects yeah. you more than you know and the funny thing is subconsciously, sometimes we say like, like I'm not saying specifically, but sometimes we say like, you know, I'm not going to be like that. I don't want that for my family. And it's like, we almost repeat that cycle. Yeah. And yeah. I'm glad that your mom said that. Cause it's like, you know, like she wants you to be the change that happens in, yeah. you know, in, in, in the Poku line. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like even with, it, it, even, even in our families, we've experienced that. our parents tell us that too. Like, you know, obviously we're both people of faith and, and the whole thing about like generational curses. It's yeah. like, you know, like the sins of the father is get down to the, and it's like, it's not like, it's not like you have to, it's not like it's like you're going to be that person, but it's like, if you don't deal with those rude issues before going into oh, marriage, sure. you can almost subconsciously repeat it. For right? sure. Yeah. 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 I think it's key. Like 
all the things that I saw that my stepdad or my, my dad did to my mom, I, I remember it and I'm like, I gotta make sure I don't repeat the same things, right? Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's heavily on my mind. I don't follow in those footsteps, right? Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, it shapes the way I, I treat whoever I'm with in a relationship, definitely, right? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So first word that comes to your mind when you hear wedding planning? Stress. I knew he was going to say that. Stress. That's his number one line. Stress. 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 stress, stress. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad stress, but it's stress. Like, yeah. It's yeah. Just, no, it's it's good stress and bad stress sometimes. You know. Yeah. Like it's it's good stress because you're you're planning something that you're going to celebrate with with your friends and family, but it's bad stress like the finance, right? The yeah. money part. It's yep. it's crazy how expensive weddings are, mm, man. And yeah. We looked at different options because because we're we're not. We're not trying to make a like have a huge wedding and you For know sure, what I mean. Yeah. We're like we're kind of low key people. We just want to invite close family and friends. So yeah. it looked at like doing a destination wedding. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know people say like it's cheap, it's nine grand or ten grand. But if you pay that price for a destination wedding, you're getting like the bare minimum, right? And, wow. And like if you're on if you're doing your ceremony, you see people on the beach in their speedos and they'll be in your pictures <laughs> and stuff, right? And it's not who really wants that, right? But yeah. if you want to have like a private beach and have like a proper reception, you're paying the same amount you're paying. For if sure. you do it here, right? Yeah. yeah. And plus, you got to people got to pay fifteen hundred to come down to your wedding, right? Yeah. And not even was in position to do that, right? Yeah. So we made the decision to do it here. And to be honest, it's it's expensive to like if you look at how much money we're spending, but yeah. if you look how much the weddings generally cost, I think we're doing okay. We're yeah. Doing all right. Yeah. And you know, I respect that because I think in our society we have this whole idea that it has to be a show for everyone. No. But you know, we're set. You're. You know, there people are there to celebrate you two and celebrate, you know, your life together. But at the end of the day, a lot of times people prep for a wedding, but they're not planning for a marriage. Exactly. They put like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then yeah. it's like, but the relationship is not even like exactly. they, didn't, they, they didn't talk about it. They didn't talk about, you know, they weren't ready for that transition. They didn't try to do counseling or something to yeah. work on it before. Yeah. Right? But I think even with you and, and we've talked about it, like you have that good five year solid base, right? Yeah. So, and and we talk about everything, right? Like yeah. I make sure that everything comes up before we get married, so there's yeah. no surprises, right? Like yeah. I need to know if we go out for dinner and your food comes back burnt, I need to know how you're gonna react, <laughs> right? I need to know if you're gonna make a scene or if you're gonna be like, ah, oh, I'll just push through it, right? Yeah, I need yeah. to know all those small things. So when we get married, there's no surprises. I'm like, what? I didn't know this was about you, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm stuck now, right? Yeah. So yeah, we we talk on communication. Like I I'm really big on communication, Maybe. right? Like yeah. I make sure that we're on the same page. As often as we can be, right? Because that's awesome. Because we could be talking about the same thing, but I can receive your message differently, mm -hmm. and then we're already, you know, like I not, feel like that's the majority of fights, like miscommunication, it's, like or unintended, you know, ways you were trying to say things. Yeah, right? yeah. Like I meant it one way, but you took it another way, but I didn't know that. Yeah. And then you're going off with that, and I'm thinking it's this, and yeah. then we're fighting, and we're like, "What are we even fighting about?" Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I know we've talked about this before, like, like when when Mel came into your life, like she she helped calm that guy that that yeah. frustrated guy that yeah. you know you you talked about growing up as a young person yeah yeah yeah, yeah. she she she's good people man and I, <laughs> when I think about her and i and i think about what like where i was when i met her to yeah. where i am now like it's, it's all it's all her man mm. she she she's a type of person that wants to be with you when you're when you're down and mm -hmm. help you and be with you on the struggle all the way up sorry so you can be a at the top together for a long haul yeah, yeah she's not that's awesome she's not just trying to get the, the successful guy she's trying to be with you yeah as you're coming up right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah she's good people man that's good man that's yeah. good to hear and, and the thing is too it's like i always like seeing like you know someone around my age or like you know actually in a solid relationship about to get married because it's like i think like what the divorce race is it's like is like 50, almost like 50 50 yeah, right yeah so it's like it's good to see that people are valuing the the like the, the the whole covenant of marriage and just being that and yeah. joining as one and stuff like that because yo man like i'm just i'm tired of seeing people that like, go from person to person and just treat them like that like so yeah you know. it's 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 not all that man like yeah people like i know some people or some guys or some women are are you know they're not ready to to settle down and they want to you know try things out but to be honest it's not all that man you gotta really focus on finding the one person for you and once you find that person you, you build on that right until you yeah. get to a stage where yeah. you're ready to take it that next level and yeah. get married right it's yeah so what advice would you give to um 
you know some singles it doesn't have to be you know youth it could be like anyone you know anyone you know let's say someone wanted to get into a relationship first and then two if they want to make that next step towards marriage take your time mm. make sure you really really get to know that person right because yeah. In the first three six months, like you're you're not gonna you're gonna see the person that they're trying to show you, right? Wow. But after six months, you're gonna see. It gets real. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see if they brush their teeth in the morning. You're gonna find <laughs> those things out, right? That things that you need to know that if this is how they are, like for the rest of like, can I deal with that for the rest of my life, right? Yeah. Like, like I said, I know I mentioned before about going out to dinner and if your food comes back burnt, like that is key for me. I need yeah. to know how you're going to respond yeah. in certain situations, yeah. right? Like the little things, the little things, right? Mm. Cause I have to live with that for the rest of my life. And yeah. is that something I can live with, right? Mm. Or something I can, I can work with. Yeah. Yeah. For with sure. That, you know, you've worked in both the, the public and the nonprofit and the private, all three of those in the private sector, you know, what are some differences in terms of, you know, I guess like, uh, some pros and cons of working public and, and nonprofit money money yeah mm. i think if you work like if you work for a municipality i think the resources are there the resources yeah. are there for the most part but yeah it's like you're really kind of limited on what you can do with it because they have like a certain vision, yeah right? yeah but i think with um not-for-profit i think they might get a little bit of money but with that little bit of money you can do as much as you can with mm. it right to provide yeah. as much as you can for that program yeah so yeah. I, I, it has its pros and cons if i had to choose a way I think I choose a nonprofit way because I think I can affect or we can affect, have yeah. a positive effect on more people at, at one time than the municipality way where it's kind of like, here's this money, you run this tournament, and then that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess too, like, even, you know, myself working for a municipality, sometimes I had to remind myself is you are still working in an agency that at the end of the day is also like a business, right? Yeah, they yeah. make profit, yeah. they, you know, not that all the things that we run are for profit, but you know, they're, they're, you're under a corporation that has specific visions and goals and structures. And then when yeah. you get into the nonprofit, a lot of them, you know, they're operating on low cost or to no cost at all. Yeah. And I guess they're more focused, I guess, on like the social and community development of yeah. neighborhoods and all that kind of stuff. I think that's the part I like, right? Yeah. I think yeah. I like the community part and, and, and the social part of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So why don't you talk about um, just your experience as a youth? So you're a youth and a communications coordinator so oh, a lot of people just think you're a youth worker but what's the breadth of exactly everything that you have to do oh man okay so my job is a youth and communications coordinator and it's kind of like two jobs together as one mm. so the youth side of things is i oversee like the youth programming that we have so i have yeah. to summer camps and after school programs we have a homework club and i provide personal support counseling to youth like high school like 14 and up so if, if a youth needs support in applying for school or figuring out what they want to take in school or healthy relationships or having problems with their with their parents or like whatever issue they may need, like housing or anything, yeah. I support them through that. And then um, for the communication side of things, I oversee like our website, our social media, oh, wow. yeah, our um, community events. So we do like Black History Month, International yeah. Women's Day. So I, I sit on the committee or I chair the committees for those events. Jeez. I do um, community outreach, so we go out to, in the community and, and, and promote like our services and programs. Um, what else do I do? I guess the question is, what don't you do at m and <laughs> That's a very good question, man. It's, it's a lot that I do, but I'm not complaining. I, I really, really enjoy yeah, my I know, job. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I really, it's a lot sometimes, and sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, but for yeah. the most part, I really enjoy my job. That's awesome. So yeah. for you, like I know we both talk about this on daily we got our to-do list and with oh, the, the different portfolios and projects going on. Like yeah. what's your process look like? How do you get things done? I have to prioritize everything. Right. Mm. And because I have kind of two portfolios, right. I have to like look, okay, what's coming up for the week. What needs to be, get, what needs to get done. Do I have to focus on getting groceries for this program or booking space for this event? Mm. Right. So like, I, I have a to-do list that's usually like two pages long. Wow. And then I just kind of go through them and I, pick okay i need to get this done today just done by wednesday and so on so on yeah yeah yeah, yeah so it's, it's a process but at first i struggled with it mm. a lot but then now i'm getting the hang of it now. getting into like a workflow yeah. yeah and it's the best feeling to check off things trust after me to do this scratch them out check them out it's no longer your concern yeah right i know trust me i'm like the same way mm -hmm. um so what what don't people understand you know with your experience as a youth worker what don't people understand about you know maybe malton or rexdale youth um, I think it's very easy to 
to look at what you see and judge them off that, right? And not know that there's a story behind them. There's a reason why they may be behaving the way Facts, that they are, right? Yeah. Like, but like when I was working with the city and I and I talked to youth in the gym, like through like programs, you saw one side of them. But now that I'm working on the other side of things and I speak to them about all the challenges that they're dealing with, I'm like, explains everything, right? Mm. Explains why they can be so combative or, or or just a little bit aggressive or anything, like what they have going on at home. If I had, if I was dealing with that, it'd be the same way, right? Yeah. And I think if you don't have that insight and you just kind of see them at face value, then yeah, I think you're you're judging them in, in a negative way, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. If you really got to know them or you found out what their backstory is, you'd be a little bit more sympathetic to where they're coming from, yeah. right? So yeah. true. Like we often say, like don't just view youth for you know, the behavior, but see them as an individual with emotions and feelings yeah. and a background story. Yeah. And it's not to excuse what they're doing, but it's to say, Hey, you know, um, they're reason. going through some stuff and yeah. you know, we all, we go into work. We may not always show it on the outside, but you know, we go into work, we might just have a fight with a close, close yeah. you know, a loved one or whatever. We might be having a crappy day, but it affects us all. Right. And yeah. I think that's something that I'm trying to work on is getting people to understand that they're human before age bracket. It's right? true. They're youth but they're human. Yeah. They're senior, but they're human. Right. Yeah. And we all, we, I mean, we're developing at differently at different ages, but I think if we find that commonality in us and don't just like age can almost be like, I guess it's called ageism, but it can almost be like a segregation factor in yeah. itself. You know, you're already experiencing racial segregation. You're already experiencing, you know, quality of life, segregation, low income, yeah. middle income. Then it's like the age. age on top of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. You, you might look at someone at 16 and think, they're all about this, but yeah. you wouldn't know, right? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking about myself at that age, and, like, nobody knew what I was going through at home, right? Yeah. Like, I'd come to school, and I just kind of I hung out with the guys or the men, and just kind of just, you know, kind of yeah. just kind of just skated through high school, right? I wasn't yeah. trying to be the most popular guy, but I, I feel like people at least knew who I was, but I wasn't trying to be that guy that everyone knew, right? Mm. So I was, I was like, whatever, whatever, a calm, nice guy. But at home... I was scrapping and, and mm. fighting and cussing and like I was just a whole different guy, right? And no one would ever know that. Yeah. So, right. And, and I think I just put up that front outside of home so people will know what I'm really dealing with. Yeah. And I think a lot of youth they have the same issues, right? Like a lot of these guys who are robbing kids or doing other things like that, they're really like sensitive, mm. broken people inside, right? The and big man yeah. act is like torn down when they're like, yeah, you know, you get at home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Most people don't see that side of them, but yeah. Yeah, that's the situation. I know it's funny. Like we did, um, we did a uh, uh, like a spoken word uh, workshop like in Christmas last time at work. Yeah. Or like not like a workshop, just like a drop in, and then like like the like the big mon thug guys come like you know like yeah. you know act, they act in our hood and acting yeah. out like you know Toronto man's thug, and then they come in like you know and it kind of went from like spoken like you know Shawayne did some spoken word and then we started putting on like some like Chris Brown and Mario. Those big guys who were yeah. acting out thug were like singing Let Me Love yeah, You. They're singing yeah, Chris yeah. Brown, yeah, Kiss Kiss. Like what? Because deep down they're kids, right? Yeah. And and, yeah. and they want to, you know, have fun. But they feel like they have to put up a front and not let people see them in that way. But yeah. it's, it's a hard life to live like that, yeah. right? It's a hard life to try to be someone that you're not. Yeah. And I almost feel like when you see the individual in a group, they're different than when they buy like 100%. when you pull that kid aside and you talk to them and say yo like what's actually going on with you yeah. as opposed to paging them in a group setting they're two different people yeah man I, that have, this is a story like so back in the day when i was in your position yeah um we, i ran this credit recovery program it's for kids in high school so like you could be in grade 12 and have like three credits but if you came to my program in the gym you would gain two credits right and oh, all, wow. And all we do is you work that out with the teachers. Yeah, with um, I think it was a GLE teacher at this at a Lincoln. I think I need to start doing that too. Yeah, I, I don't know if he can still do it now. Mm. They had like extra funding, so they oh, they okay, use that. Okay. So they would see me once a week for two hours, and every other week would go swimming. So I say week one would be basketball, week two swimming, yeah. week three hockey, whatever. So we had this youth who was new to Malton, who just came out of the Roy, the youth detention center. And he, yeah, yeah. and he was in there because he stabbed someone at his the previous school that he was at. Yeah. So when he was in this program, I was trying to reach out to him, kind of figure out what's going on. And I was asking him like, like, why he like what's going on and whatever, whatever. And he's like, how, um, like he doesn't, he just doesn't care about anything, right? Mm. 
So I say, yo, don't you want to stop living that way? Like, cause you, like you can't do it forever because it's going to result in either you going back to jail or something worse, right? Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. At least if I do something and I go back to jail, I have a pillow and three meals that I'll get. And then you say that to me, what am I supposed to say to you, right? Because yeah. his life at home is worse than him going to jail. Wow. Right? So yeah. he doesn't care what he does because at least wherever he ends up, he's going to get three meals and a bed to sleep on with a pillow. That's sad that that's his better option. Yeah, that's right? Crazy, yeah. So everyone else will look at him like this guy is, you know, a menace to society, but mm. what is his options, right? That, wow, wow. Yeah. I think that's so that's that's so key. It's like it's not even about like what's going on at home, but what are the available options to even help him? Yeah. Right? Because like yeah. everyone wants to, everyone wants to, you know, be like deal with these youth, but how do we deal with them and deal with them effectively yeah. and help them? Like it, and that's the thing, even just saying that we're not even, it shouldn't be that we're dealing with them, it's but we're going them. through it with them. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So how do you, like, I, I asked John this too, and I say like, how do you stay relevant to young people today? And with that, like, obviously like your reputation precedes you, like, you know, the guidance counselors from the school will be like, go see Chris. You know, I might be like, go see Chris. He might be able to help you. So they come to you first visit. Why are they coming to you on the second visit? Like, how are you connecting with these kids? Well, I, I try to provide a safe space for them. I try to yeah. make them feel like they can say whatever they need to say or they want to say and know that it's not going to, no one else will hear or no one else will find out and they can trust me, right? I try mm -hmm. to build that trust with them from from the beginning. But um, I, me being in Mountain for almost nine years helps a lot, right? Cause yeah. If I, like when I first started off, I wasn't really trying to get to know youth. I was just trying to, Cause I'm from Rexdale, I'm in Moulton, Yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to kind of work my way through things. Yeah. So after like maybe the second or third year and I'm like, okay, this youth know who I am. They know what I am, what I'm about and the type of guy that I am. So now I can actually try to reach out to them, support them. For and sure. I think me con continuing, continually doing that and people getting to find out that, you know, Chris is not a bad guy to go talk to, you know, mm -hmm. if you go talk to him, he can, yeah. he can help you out. And, yeah. and I, and I kind of, I think that's like my, my main goal in life is to help as many youth as i can mm -hmm. right because what i went through because like my background story like to kind of go back to what we were talking before is i after high school i didn't know what i wanted to do with my life and that's and i think i was like i was 18 and my mom was like chris if you don't go back to school you can't live here mm -hmm. so i'm like okay so i went to centennial college i wanted to go to centennial college and do automotive technician but when I applied, I couldn't get in because I didn't have grade 12 math or grade 12 science. Yeah. So I had to go back to high school for a semester to take that. And that was another experience because I'm graduating. I'm with these young guys. I'm like, mm. so I feel like I'm whack. I'm why am I back in high school? I shouldn't have been done. Yeah. So then I finished that. Then I applied. I got in. I went to Centennial. And I I went there just because my mom told me I had to. I didn't go there because I wanted to. Right. Yeah. So I was there for a whole year and I did nothing. Like I can, I can't even tell you how many times I went to class. I went there, did everything else but go to class. Yeah. So I wasted that whole year, dropped out, and from nineteen to like twenty three, did nothing. Mm. I was working these dead end factory jobs just so I can have money, so I can go out or whatever, right? Like I just, I didn't care, and I yeah. knew I had a huge effect on my mom because I'm her, I'm the oldest, right? Yeah. And she was looking at me like, like where did I go wrong? She did mm. everything she could, but I just just didn't care yeah 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 so then um one day at at 23 i woke up and i'm like i can't live like this anymore mm. i'm like what am i doing with my life so yeah and and like because of everything that's happened with my mom and stepdad because I, I used to have a really really close relationship with with god like i was a devout christian but mm. when i saw what i was going on with my mom my mom's probably the most religious person you ever meet mm. right so i'm like if she's going through all this and like what's what's really going on right so it yeah. really affected my relationship with God and I kind of like kind of moved away from him and I kind of get involved in stuff that I shouldn't be getting involved in. Yeah. But that day that I woke up and I said, I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of feeling like this. So I decided first thing I wanted to do was start to get my relationship back with God. So I started going to church and everything. Yeah. Then I decided I need to go to school and then I didn't know what to take, but I knew I like sports and I knew I like kind of working with people because when you work with people, every day is a new thing, right? Yeah. It's not like I'm working at a factory and I know I'm coming to load these boxes in a trailer every day yeah but i'm working with people it's a new experience every time so i yeah. want to kind of do the, the two of them so i looked at humber i wanted to take sports uh, management 
but they didn't have it, but they had recreation and leisure. What's the difference between those? I see a lot of like people choose, like having trouble decide between sports management and rec and leisure. Um, I think sports management is it's more on a like managing. I think like facilities and stuff. No, like I think it's more like maybe like organ organizations, like maybe like say a. Like if you want to like I don't know like Missaga Marnex basketball program, oh, okay, okay. like you manage the program, but recreation and leisure is more like managing like rec centers and programs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, so I decided to to take recreation and leisure best decision of my life mm-hmm. because it was exactly everything I wanted. That's awesome. And I know most people think recreation they think it's like playing games and stuff, <laughs> but it's nowhere close. We did finance and HR wow. and all that, right? So. When you leave school, you're, you're like ready to be a programmer, That's right? Awesome. In a in a municipality, right? So, it was an amazing program. I I just, I, re, I would not refer to anyone to go to, mm-hmm. but um. So yeah. So once I got into school, the one of my teachers was a manager at Malton. Oh wow! So I asked him like I'm trying to work in the field because I never been in a rec center, I never did camps, nothing like that. So I'm like I'm trying to work in a rec center. Like, could you help me out? I was like, yeah, I go talk to this lady named Natalie and mm-hmm. see what she can do. That was in October, I was saying 2008. I went to go see Natalie and she's like, no, I'm sorry, there's nothing available. Mm. I think once a week, every week from October to I think May, I was harassing Natalie. Natalie, wow. I need a job. And I think middle of May, she's like, hey, she called me and said, hey, Chris, we have a summer camp opportunity. Awesome. She's like, you're the first person I called because I can't forget you. And mm. that was how I got into the city. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was really consistent and persistent because i really really want a job i'm like if i get a job in my field while i'm in school it's gonna stop me from going back to the life i was living right mm, yeah and and i don't know if a lot of youth have that persistence now i was actually i was actually just gonna say that I'm yeah like, i feel like if they treated like their persistence with so many other things they're gonna like they're they're at ball practice they're here yeah. this time but if they use that same persistency to the pursue a job and not quit like a lot of like there's a lot of youth that come to me and they're like i want a job they're like you really you really want a job yeah are you ready to do this 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 yeah this is the kind of things that they're looking for do you think that you know you whatever it, yeah or can you explain it and then they'll be like oh you know just put in a good word i'm like my my word holds a lot of power with it so like i don't want to just be saying for sure because at the end of the day we have to make sure our centers are running good but it's like you know they don't i think some of them they like they don't they i don't know if they value jobs as much like what i'm noticing with youth they don't value job opportunities as much as we did back then yeah. and it's like you get that it's like like when i first got into security like and i wanted to get into policing like i was on top of the world i'm like yeah. yes yeah. you know robocop i'm gonna become a cop and yeah. all this kind of stuff not talking about robocop, yeah, but yeah. like you felt nice you get the you get you know you get the you get the badge you get like you know you get your utility belt you feel yeah. nice now it's like oh i can just show up you know two hours later and i'm not gonna yeah. be fired what yeah minimum yeah. wage is 14 dollars an hour no one's gonna just be hiring anyone no. these days right? yeah i think they, they take they take it for granted, right? Yeah. Like my first job was at Food Basics in Rexdale. I think I was 17 when I got it. I was the happiest guy. Yeah. I'm like, I can buy my own bus tickets. I don't yeah. want to tell me nothing. Right. And then it changed my whole, my whole, like, like my whole outlook on life. Right. Yeah. So I, I was able to get myself a job. Right. But a lot of these youth now, they just say, yo, Chris, give me a job. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. Right. You got to, if you want a job, you got to tell me, you got to show me some, some type of, I don't know, more than just saying I just want a job. Give me some willingness. Yeah, yeah, right. Like say, hey, like here's my resume. I'm trying to get into this this job or whatever. Like what can I do? Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, you know, you you talked about, you know, doing recreation and leisure at Humber. So like how how how's the how's that market? Because I know you said you started Mm -hmm. there and then you went into the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Like is it like that hard to get a job? Hundred yeah. Oh, it's not hard to get a job if you're gonna work like programs or camp. Yeah. But if you're trying to go above, if you're trying to be like a full time staff, the front line. past front line, it's, it's tough. Like, yeah, because yeah. hundreds and hundreds of people apply for those jobs, and yeah. you kind of it's it's tough. You kind of gotta know the right people and be in the right place at the right time yeah, to get yeah. those jobs. Yeah. So your youth, you 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 love working with youth and helping people. You love sports. So like, if you if someone came to you, they're like, we're gonna give you grant money. What are you doing with that grant money? How much grant money? Okay, let's say three year period, they're giving you one point five million. Oh my gosh. Um Ontario Trillium hit us up. Yeah, yeah, please do. Um Well, 
I don't know if this will work, but my dream was always to to have my own like facility. Okay. So if I could if I could have anything I want, I'd run my own facility and I'd, I'd break it up into different sections. So we have like basketball and, and say soccer, whatever fields in there. So yeah. For sports, I would want like a like three music rooms with instruments so people can play music, arts and crafts. Like I want like a multi purpose facility that anyone that depending on whatever the interests are, they yeah. can walk in the center and have something there for them to do. Yeah. But if it was something like grant for uh, one point five million. I don't know. I think it depends on the community I'm in and I'd have to see what the needs are and then assess it based off that and yeah. then make the best program I I can do. Like yeah. I can say I can run a basketball program but I Anyone could do that yeah, with anything, yeah, yeah. right? But I'd, I'd probably add some mentorship programs and with mixing with sports. I think if you combine the two, I think the center for sports would bring the kids in, and then everything you teach them on top of that yeah. will, will hold more. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, like, you know, not to get, not to get, like, not to step on toes, and, you know, we don't like to just walk on eggshells on this show, but, you know, have you ever felt you've been in situations where, you know, you may have been just as or more qualified than someone, but you feel like, race might have been an issue or like yeah. you're you're more qualified and like i know we can never prove those things but is that a real issue today in hiring practices like do you feel like there's some people who shouldn't be getting these positions and yes mm. yes so i can tell you a story i applied for this job and i went in for the interview and the job was to work with with at-risk youth mm -hmm. So I went into the interview. I felt like I did really well in the interview. The two people who interviewed me sounded like they loved me and yeah. everything. So I was I felt pretty confident that I might get the job. Mm. Uh, I think a week later, they called me back and said, oh, we went with another person, another girl. And she has more, ex she, they said that she had more experience in the type of program that they're trying to run. So unfortunately, they didn't go my way. I said, okay, no problem. Two days later, they call me back and say, you know what, Chris, um, we really think that all the experiences and everything that you have will really add to this program. And I think if we had you and the other person, it'd be a great fit. Yeah. So I went, I met the person. The person doesn't look anything like me mm -hmm. and doesn't have the same type of experience that I had. Yeah. But I felt she got hired because she fit with everyone else. She fit the the demographic in, in that organization, right? Yeah. But they don't get, like, me and her worked really well together For and sure. everything yeah. was good, right? But I feel that if I had the same experience and I looked like her, I would have got the job the mm -hmm. first time. But I think they wanted me but didn't want me. You yeah, know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Because, yeah. like, and this is the thing, like, like I premised it with, it's we're not, we're not, like, we can never say 100% that race is the issue. But if we also go to the extreme and say that race is not an issue, I think yeah, we're, yeah. You know, we're... You're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself, right? Yeah. And, like, you know, I, I don't know why policing just keeps coming up in every podcast. But, like, I did want to become a police officer. And I'm not someone who's bitter with it. Honestly, the, the men and women who serve on policing, I respect them so much. Because at the end of the day, someone's holding a gun to your head, you're going to want a cop there, right? So at the end of the day, they protect us. You know, they, you know, they help us. There's, there, there's some issues that we got to work through, but I respect costs, but I, I, I would look at graduate, like, you know, some police agencies would post on their Twitter, graduating class of 2017. And mm -hmm. there's one black guy yeah. and then one Filipino guy. And it's like the most, and the caption was the most diverse group of officers this year graduating. I'm like, so that's the most diverse. And I know, what? I know. So I like, know. I feel like even with that, I, I did criminology in, in my undergrad. It's like, <clears throat> it's not to say that no, don't ever get it twisted. Like because of your color means you're more qualified or you're, like you have to be a qualified individual. But at the same time, I feel like even like that job, even, even as youth workers, to some extent, we almost have to represent the, the, the majority or, yeah. or even sometimes the, the minorities of the communities we're in so that we're like some youth is coming up to me. Like we, we talked about this before, you know, we might talk with the same youth and they might not rate me at first because they're like, Oh, who's this Brown guy with a beard. Right. Yeah. Until they get to know me and I break down that guard. Yeah. But you know, it might be easier where like, let's say a black male comes to you and is like, you know, it, it, we would be kidding ourselves to think that that's not like For an, sure. an engagement 
tool right for sure our, our color itself right our sure. our culture you know and like a guyanese kid might come to me you know and be like okay he's guyanese i trust him yeah it's like they automatically yeah a Ghanaian because, person comes up to you they trust you yeah I even if they don't know you at all right? yeah i think if, if you see something that you can relate to or it looks similar to you you can you, can, you feel more comfortable talking to them right For like sure. don't get it twisted i know me being a, a black male has his advantages mm. when dealing with certain youth. I yeah. know that, right? But at the same time, being a black man has his disadvantages, mm. right? So, I mean, it kind of goes both ways, right? Yeah, and even with the policing now, right? I know that, yeah, the diversity is not there in policing. But at the same time, how many black males are trying to be cops? Yeah. Right? Because of the stigma, right? Like, mm. a lot of black males don't want to be cops because they think cops are the enemy, right? They're, they're, they're looking to put down us, right? So. Yeah. So yeah, at the same time, that adversity is not there. But it's, I'm, I'm sure like this, the numbers have gone up more, right? People don't want to be cops, but if you look from from the, like back in the other generation to now, not many black male youth are want to be cops, right? So yeah, it kind yeah, of goes for both sure. ways. For sure. So you know, going back to you know talking about you know broken families, and mm-hmm. we talked a bit about your dad, we talked about your stepdad, but you know, you said that I guess there was just that lack of relationship with your with your with your biological father, so. I know that, like you mentioned, like there was kind of just like that that bitterness that kind of just like yeah. grew and grew and kind of led to some of that frustration. But you know, I always, me and Dre always talk about this. I always, I always look at that episode of um, Fresh, Prince. Fresh Prince that gets every you yeah. know grown man in his field. Yeah. But would you ever be willing to you know reconcile or make an effort to connect with your dad? Like, not like, and you know, I feel like a lot of people do it more like when they're on their deathbed. But mm. do you plan to ever kind of? You know, now that you're getting married, your life's, you know, you're starting your life. What is that? Uh, what are yeah. your plans with that? So it's funny you say that. Um, I think second week of January was the first time I spoke to him in like, I think six years. Wow. Yeah. I think last time I spoke to him, my grandmother, his mom just passed. And then he moved to Edmonton. Yeah. And then I haven't spoken to him since. Wow. And then, uh, so after New Year's, he reached out to my younger brother. And him and my younger brother kind of speak a little bit more often. Yeah. So he reached out to my brother and asked him for my number. And I said, he, I told him, brother, you can give it to him. And then he called me. I didn't answer because I wasn't ready to talk to him. And then I called him back. And then we spoke for like 15, 20 minutes. And it wasn't as, like, it wasn't as, as rough as I thought it was going to be. Like, I didn't, like, I don't have that that um that anger or anything like mm. that like i, I kind of i don't know like i kind of accepted that this is the situation and whatever and i can't hold this grudge on him forever right like yeah like you said like i'm, I'm getting married i'm older now like he did his he had his mistakes and whatever right we're, we're we live and you learn right so we spoke he, i kind of asked him about what i'm doing with my life i kind of asked him about him kind of caught up a little bit we didn't get like too in, in depth but it was it was a good start of conversation, right? And then I kind of said that, you know, we're gonna continue to try to speak, you know, every so often just to kind of build some type of relationship because at the end of the day, he's still my dad, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, even though he did what he did, like even my mom was telling me, like, Chris, you don't want to wake up one day and find out that he passed and mm. we haven't, yeah, kind of like fixed that, right? So, yeah. yeah. So I'm on the process of trying to build some type of relationship with him, and at least. If we can, then I might, you know, answer some questions about yeah stuff that happened in the past, and maybe I can get to understand him a little bit more. Cause I didn't get his side of the story. I don't know mm. what it is, right? I don't know if I cared back then, but I mean yeah. now, if I give him the opportunity to tell me like what he was going through and what hit him, that what led him to do what he did, mm. it might give him an insight on me, and I can learn from that, so I don't make those same mistakes in my relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so. so if you could say like we'll do a trial run if you could say like you know two three sentences to him or like a few few words what would you say to him you got you know you get into that serious talk where are you going first was he was he ready to be like a father and a husband like mm. what was the situation where you know what i mean yeah. that led him to like yeah, yeah. because he, he he was living a life that wasn't that was different than you know than you he wasn't living like a married man as a father. He had two kids and he yeah. just living his life like he was like nineteen, twenty and doing whatever he wanted, mm-hmm. leaving my mom who's new to the country. 
Yeah. Because he was living here before he brought us over. Yeah. So he was he was good to go. But my mom doesn't know anything. Mm. And he left her to take care of two young kids and in, the, in a whole new country, right? Yeah. And I'm like, how could you be so care? Like, how do you not care? Like, that's your mm. wife and these are your kids, right? So, but I don't know where he's coming from. So I probably want to talk to him and see where his mindset was. Yeah. And if he made a mistake in getting married too early or having kids too early, whatever the case was, right? And then from there, kind of kind of go from there yeah I, li- I like what you said because um i think even just maturing as a man and maturing as a professional and a work youth worker like you know that stories aren't all one-sided yeah that there are some elements that we don't understand and yeah. and i like the fact that you do acknowledge that i still want to hear his side yeah and and some people go to the extreme like you know they'll they'll trust to the point of like making them like like they'll trust to the point of like being putting themselves in hurt all the time and then the other extreme is i don't want to talk to them at all i don't care they should have been there but you're kind of like at the middle ground and you're like hey i was hurt this is what how it affected me but let me hear it from you instead of hearing it from other people yeah right i think before i was in that i don't care what he has to say it doesn't matter whatever whatever but i think now that i'm i'm growing i kind of have like my life experience is kind of like kind of showing that there's certain circumstances that can lead people to do things that maybe they didn't want to do, but maybe they just got caught up. In yeah. Whatever the, the reason is, right? But yeah. I mean, I should I should give him the opportunity to at least yeah. we can talk. Like we never had any deep kind of kind of conversations ever. Yeah. So I mean, this is something that I think yeah. eventually it will happen. We just gotta kind of build that relationship to get yeah. to that point where yeah he can share with me about what he was going through during that stage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So who's the uncle Phil in your life? You, you didn't have your, you know, the, your, 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 your biological dad, that president, the stepdad, who was that guy that was an older guy who maybe could have been related, could have not been, but you saw as a father figure, if any. None. That's really? my mom. My mom is my everything. She's my okay. rock. She was my mom, my dad, my, my supporter, my mom, everything, anything I needed. My mom was there. She, mm. she, like, I'll tell you a story that I know, like, this is how, when I think about my mom and I and I like I really, really appreciate the stuff she done. So when I was in high school, I was doing my community hours, my forty hours. I was coaching the track team, my elementary school's track team. And we had a tournament somewhere in another I think at Centennial Park. But at that time my younger brother, my youngest brother had daycare, right? And at that time my mom worked day, so I think I would drop him. Yeah, so I would take him to daycare and then I would go to school. But I couldn't take him to daycare because I was going to the tournament. So I was telling my mom, like, what are we going to do with Isaiah? Yeah. My mom worked a double shift, so she worked all day and all night. Wow. So she can get that day out just so she can take Isaiah to wow. daycare so I can go to track. She's the real MVP. Yeah, you know, and, and I, when that happened, I didn't take it in, but she did, right? Yeah. It's not till years later where we, it came up again. And, and I remember when I asked her about it, she goes, yeah. You had to do that tracking, so I had to work a double. I'm like, she's so selfless. Like she, she did everything she could for us, right? I, I, and I wish I could have recognized it back then to mm-hmm. show her my appreciation, because I know when I was young, I, I didn't show her how much, whatever everything she did for us, how much it mean to me, right? And how yeah. much, if she didn't do what she did, I don't know where I'd be right now, mm-hmm. right? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, like and and you know, big up the moms who have to played mom and dad and like yeah. you know cover both roles and work two jobs and all that kind of stuff like i always say on mother's day sorry i always say on father's day happy father's day but also happy happy you know father's day to all the moms, the moms out there who yeah. do both roles yeah right because yeah. my stepdad was in the picture at that time you know hmm. but you think you can ask him to do that he's yeah. not doing it right and my mom sacrificed just for me and this guy wow that's another story but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know all of this you know um, we talked a bit about faith like you know you talked about being in a place where you know I guess you God wasn't in the picture or you questioned God or you what it wasn't God wasn't like you know the most central part of your life like what role has God played in in where you are today and and how you live your life currently I involve him in everything that I do mm. because when I didn't have him in my life everything was difficult life was so hard I didn't like who I was mm. everything was just just wrong yeah well since i started to focus on involving him in every aspect of my life i'm getting married i have a job i have the car that i always wanted like things are looking good right like i'm not where i need to be but i'm way better than where i used to be right so like i think 
it's it's key to have him in in, in the middle of everything. You surround everything mm-hmm. around him and everything. Yeah, will work out. Like I'm not where I need to be as a Christian, but I know I'm I'm working my way there. Yeah, and I know he's he's with me as I'm I'm yeah. working there. Right? Yeah, and I think that's it. The just that desire to better yourself. Yeah. But like we were even talking about it before the episode. Like, you know, uh, you know, talking about like back to your mom. Like how like the amount of like the amount of scriptures like even my mom they yeah. know and it's not that they're just memorizing it but like they truly live out that part of the bible that says hide the word in your heart like yeah. and then you know even watching that show on netflix you know like the the bible or like you know yeah. ad or anything like you look at those disciples and how they live their life yeah. and it convicts me because i'm just like they sold their houses they sold everything they owned to yeah. follow jesus and you know just trust in his ministry then there's me coming home and i'm just like I can't even give five God five minutes to read his word. I and know. I'm just like, it, it really challenges me, but I'm so glad that we've had those like prayer warriors of mothers in our life because they really kind of like, honestly, I'll be completely honest. I know that God pursues us, but like without them as that agent of change, like, yeah. I don't know that I would be in the, where I want, where I am in my faith right yeah. now. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. we emanate what we see. We see our parents do something. We think that that's what we should do or, or it's acceptable. Right. So even back to the whole discussion of youth, you, you know, some youth, I always say like, I don't blame them because maybe they don't have the best parental example in their life. And 100%. they're just, they're just emanating what they see at home in their environment. You're a product of your environment sometimes. Yeah. Right? And and I think a lot of us, like speaking for myself, I'm, I'm a product of my environment. Mm. Like the path that I end up taking, like the difference between, like when I talk about like my fiance Mel, she did everything the way I get quote unquote supposed to be. Like right after high school, she went to university and she did um her she did four years university, did her teacher's college, then she went on and got her master's, right? And now she's teaching in Ofa right now, right? And for the most part, I think every parent wants their child to go through that. Yeah. I went from high school back to high school to college to dropping out of college to doing nothing for four years, mm-hmm. then going back to school and then like I didn't get my first full time job until 29 oh wow you know what i mean yeah yeah. that was my first full-time job right and my girl is younger than that and she's really good to go right and, yeah. I, and I think and but she didn't grow up in the same kind of environment that we did right she yeah. grew up in mississauga so she had like what drew me to her like if you look at her you wouldn't know that she went through the same struggles mm-hmm. that i went through right but hers might look a little bit different but like she like her parents split up and she yeah. like she went through the same type of issues that I did, but her environment was different than mine, right? Yeah. And I think her they she had more resources to to help her get through those things in life, but it was just me, right? Yeah, My mom yeah. was dealing with too much on herself that she couldn't really focus on helping. She just kept trying to make sure that we were safe and she protected us and did what she had to do, right? But yeah. In terms of like guiding us where to go, she didn't really know herself, right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Yeah. So like even even like mentioning that you know being in all these part-time jobs finally getting a job at 29 full-time right like you know uh that iconic phrase by your favorite basketball player joel mv trust the process trust the process so how looking like when you get into that place where you're in a place where you feel like you've come to some success or you feel like you're in a better place than before looking back you're like wow look at what i've came through trust like, me. How, like like how do you how do you keep going on like i know that I'm sure that when you were when you were like you know 13 year old you like you probably never would have imagined you'd be where you are today, right? No. Yeah. No, when I was 13, I I wanted to be um the guy that drives a subway train. Mm. That's what my that was what I was trying yeah. to be as as small as that could, yeah. is, right? Like I didn't have any aspirations because and in, 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 like growing up where we grew up, we don't see anyone doing anything on that level, mm. right? Like like you don't really see black males coming from where I'm coming from on, on like as presidents or whatever the case mm. may be right so me going through what I went through because I worked I don't know maybe 15 to 20 different jobs kind of like where, where I am now and I look back and I'm like everything that I went through was for a reason right mm. it prepared me to get to where I am now wow. right like yeah all those jobs all the people that all the different because I went from working in Rexta no working in Oakville then working in Rexta and, and yeah. it's a com- complete different contrast between the two right yeah Man, but but at that time, like, I'm just searching for a job. But now that I look back at it, I was getting different experiences to yeah. prepare me for this job, right? Yeah. So I think when, like, when you say trust the process, whatever, whatever you're going through right now, it, it might not be ideal for you, but there's a reason why you're going through that, right? Mm-hmm. So when you get to where you're getting to, you have all this experience and skills you need. 
to have to be at the job that you that you want to have or yeah. that you're at right now, right? And and at some point, I always me and my mom always talk about that. Is is it's like, you know, some of the struggles that we go through. Like I feel like God almost says, I know that you're tough enough to handle this because you're my child. But sometimes you go through it because I know that there's someone that's gonna come across your path that you need to be able to have gone through it to For be sure. able to counsel them through it. Right? For sure. Yeah. And I feel like your life has been entirely in, like you know in. In, you know indicative on the fact that like you help people out of your pain and out of your struggle and you, you know you have experience in other things but i feel like mm -hmm. you know now trusting that process it's like hey i might be going through a certain time in my life but one look at where i've come from and two man i always like it's almost like you're excited i'm like i'm like god and i know this is this is tough but i'm excited how you're gonna use this as a ministry in yeah. my life or to bless someone and that's what i try to always keep my mind on like don't forsake the time of small beginnings and don't forsake the trial that you're in because if you endure god's gonna bless you and be able to be like i'm gonna pay it forward and i'm gonna help someone through that yeah man. to build your character and, and and build parts of you they didn't even know you have right yeah, yeah. so when you want so when you get to where you want to be you have those things in yeah you, right yeah. yeah it's key so you know, we I got to that question that I always like to ask in my podcast. Okay. To every guest. So if you can go back in time, what would you tell grade nine Chris Apoku just about oh. to enter high school? Hop in the time machine. He's about to walk in first day. What would you say to warn him? Take life seriously, or mm. or or just think about your future. And and I and I know a lot of youth now don't think about what life would be like after high school. They think high school is it, right? They're trying to make it in high so school. True, but yeah. High school is a small, small part of your life, right? Yeah. It's, it's like the decisions you make between 18 and 25 would determine what your life would be like 25 going forward. Wow. Right? So like you really, and it's and it's tough to make kids 15, 16, 17 to decide what they want to do for the rest of their life because mm -hmm. they're only 16. How are they supposed to know, right? Yeah. But I mean, if you don't start thinking about where you want to be or what you see yourself doing, then your, your your life would be that much harder, right? For so sure. I just start thinking about, yo, when I'm 45, I want to be doing this and have that. Even yeah. if you don't get that, at least you you have something to 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 strive for, right? Yeah, yeah. So for sure, if I have to go back in time, I I told Chris to hit the gym so I can <laughs> get big <laughs> and 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 really focus on my future, put myself in position that. When I'm at the age I am now, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at, right? I'm yeah. not still trying to be on the come up. Like, I know that I did what I had to do to be where I am now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, you know, as a way to segue into rapid fire, what style would you have told Chris Oboku not to rock? Never, ever, never Jeez. do that style. You know, I used to, I used to tuck my pants into my socks. <laughs> I used to, yes, I, someone. Oh my gosh! I, yeah, I, I used to wear the six X baggy shirt. Jeez. I remember going to Sheridan Mall and walking to I think it was Ecstasy and, and looking for six X white tees <laughs> and black tees. And I'm I'm skinny. I'm skinnier. I'm skinnier than I am right now. So the shirt is just hanging off me, and I have my pants low. Oh my god! I don't know <laughs> what we were thinking back then, but. I don't change all that. Jeez, yeah. jeez, jeez. All right, man. So we got to that point in the show where we go to rapid fire. So okay. first thing that comes to your mind, all right? All right. Let's see. Let's let's see. Uh, let's see where we're at in the in uh, in this contest. Pepsi or Coke? Pepsi. No, we yes. were like we were like we were like three and one, I think. Oh. Uh, now we're like four. No, actually, no. We were like two and one. Now we're like three and one. I don't know what it is. Like Coke leaves some jeez, like a, jeez, like if I drink more than one Coke, it leaves like a, a taste in my mouth that I don't mm. like. I'm, I See, I say the opposite about what Pepsi. I feel like I could taste the aluminum can when I drink Pepsi. Oh yeah. Really? No. I always say that if you're a Pepsi person, it says something about your character. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Advil or Tylenol? Advil. Okay. DC or Marvel? Marvel. Okay. Best thing about being a youth worker? Working with youth. Mm. I really like working with youth because because they're, they're they're so like they're at a stage where you can really really if they if they're ready to take it they can really change right yeah I like working with youth I yeah. think it keeps me young too right mm. yeah favorite place you've traveled local or or international. I've only been to Dominican and Cuba. Which is your favorite? That's always like the, the typical battle. Yeah. Ah, Dominican. Cuba okay. wasn't bad, but it wasn't nothing like Dominican. Yeah. yeah, Dominican. Caribbean star or Mr. Jerk? 
Caribbean. <laughs> this guy's that. Uh, Caribbean star. I won't tell you why, but Caribbean star. <laughs> um, favorite basketball team? It's the Raptors. And okay. Raptors, I'm, I've always been a Raptors fan from, from day one. But I think favorite team to watch is Philadelphia mm. and, and Houston. So I'm a, Current I'm, Philadelphia, well, like, Fultz is back now. You think yeah. you, you think that Fultz is going to, like... Uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to make a, a huge impact right now. But I think he'll make some impact, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Favorite soccer team? The Black Stars, Ghanaian soccer team. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's my soccer okay. team. Favorite song that you're listening to right now? Jeez. Should I tell you the truth? Or should I just, just tell me the truth. It's real talks. Um, The Black Panther album. It's hey. a song called I Am. I, I don't know how to say her name. I think it's Yorga Smith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that like track is, stays on repeat. Like when I'm driving home on late nights, that's the song I'm listening to. You're, you're, it's so funny that you say that because the you know the, the Killmonger theme where it's like, you know, it has like the piano and then it adds like the yeah, trap. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no, there's no words to that at all. But literally, you ever been? Am I the only one who like you're driving in a car and like your 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 head's to the side of the window and like the song the track's playing and you pretend you're like in a yeah. music video yeah, or like yeah, yeah. that's I'll me. Like I'm like I feel, I feel I feel like tough when I'm listening to this. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you could go back to a single point of your life, what day would that be? I was 13 or 12. And um, I got I was playing house league soccer, and um, the rep team called me out, called me up to come play in a tournament in in Kingston, and I went to go play, and I was excited about the opportunity, but I was nervous as can be because I'm playing with rep level players. Yeah, that was my first time, and I think I was so nervous it affected my game, and I didn't look too good, and they dropped me back down to house league. Mm. But if I took the opportunity and, and forgot about my nerves and just focus on playing the best I can I think would have done well for me because I didn't end up making a rep team until I was 16 yeah right so yeah for sure so if you can go if you if you could have coffee or tea or whatever your drink of choice is with anyone from any point in history dead or alive who would it be oh my gosh as odd as it sound I I was really in like I really wanted to get to know like mike tyson mm. i don't know why but wow, that's an interesting answer. i watched his documentary and i really wanted to like if i could bite his ear mike <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> when i was like when i was young, like, younger even up to now i like to i like to um like i want to get to know why people think the way they do or, or act the way they do like mm. if i could i would have took psychology back in the day yeah. if i was serious about school yeah but like i'd want to talk to mike tyson kind of just He's, he's, he's such an interesting guy mm. to me, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, maybe when you make Tyson, yeah. Yeah. Name a song that puts you in your feelings. You hear it and you think about, you know, that girl that girl who was like, you know, on the girl soccer team when you're like in grade five and you're like fiending um, after. Alicia Keys. Butterflies. Oh, no, no, no. Alicia oh. Keys, you don't know my name. Okay. You don't know my name, we Alicia Keys. Mix these, we got a yeah. good mix of these. Every time songs. I hear that song. It puts me, yeah, puts me somewhere. All right. If you were a superhero, what would your superpower be? And probably invisibility. Okay. Why? I don't know. I'm trying to think of what I'll do with that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying I think... to think of, a, of an answer that doesn't sound crazy. Exactly. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just so I can, I don't know. I, I, I just think it would be invisibility. I can't keep you a real reason why, but mm. I think I'd Yeah, it'd be that. cool. I mean, like. It's invisibility. Be, you can just like you know do your own thing. Yeah, maybe creep on people. I don't know. Did you have a nickname growing up? Um. So, I had I had a few. So I had my last name. My last name was Poku. So people just okay. called me Poku. Poku. Yeah. I had I had a soccer coach call me Stretch because I was just a long, lanky guy. Um. Some guys now call me Wallace. And the, the reason why it is because... Yeah, I was always wondering why your Instagram has Wallace for one second. Because people used to call me... So my name's Chris. So people yeah. used to call me Christopher. Then they went oh. to Christopher Wallace. Oh, okay, and then okay. it just went to Wallace. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. What's something most people don't know about you? Um, uh, I don't like being a center of attention. Mm. So like this wedding that I'm about to have. I'm not worried about being married. I'm yeah. worried. Of, I'm worried about the wedding because I know the attention not even on me. I know it's gonna be on on my girl. But at the same time, I'm watching people taking pictures and everyone's looking at me like that. Is is a 
it's, it's a fear that I have. Like, yeah. I just don't like being the center of attention. Where do you feel most out of place? Um, um, I have an answer, but I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think when I was younger, if I was anywhere outside the hood, I'd put out of place. Mm-hmm. But I think now, because I like, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm a confident guy, but I know who I am. Right? Mm-hmm. I know what yeah, I like yeah, yeah. and I don't like and. You but know back I mean? then it was like that. Like it's like when we go up to, uh, like when we were at, we were kids and we go up to like Coburg, Peterborough, you're yeah. Not Walmart. Everyone's looking at you. Yeah. Like this. I went to now. Act- I know what if now what I know what if. I went to Acton. I went to Walmart in Acton, like when I was younger. And everyone, when I say everyone, everyone in, in the Walmart was staring at me. Yeah. And I'm like, I do not belong here. <laughs> right? But I think now I go anywhere and it is what it is, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Lastly. What's the title of the current chapter of your life right now? If it were in a book, what's the title of the current chapter? Um, Chris gets married. Chris gets married. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's the big next, the biggest stage I have to come to next. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we reached that point of the show where it's guest corner. So Chris. Um, shout out anything you want to do, plug any plug, social media, whatever you want. Um, if you guys are ever in Malton, come see me, come find me. If you come to MS and I'm not in the office, just wait, I'll be back. I'm yeah. probably out in the center somewhere. But yeah, come to Malton, you know, we can we can talk and you know, we can kinda get to know each other more. But yeah, it's pretty much it. I'm not really a social media guy, so I'm not throwing any handles, but yeah. If you want to see me, come see me in person and you know, we can talk. What are some like three or four things that like you you like most people come to you for? Um, a lot of people don't know, or a lot of youth kind of want to figure out what to do next after high school. Yeah. So it's not necessarily always school. It can just be finding a career or going to trades or whatever it may be. Um, I get that. I get, um, jobs. People are always looking for jobs. Some people come to me for, for housing. And, um, some people just want to come just, just to talk and get advice. Like they, they're in a situation and they don't know where to go next. And I kind of, kind of help them figure out a solution to the issue that they're dealing with for sure awesome yeah. and is there any any last thing that you'd want to say to our our listeners today um as cliche as it may sound like follow your dreams right like mm-hmm. whatever you want to do go and do it right because mm-hmm. when i told my mom i was going to school for recreation she's like what the hell is recreation <laughs> right? and i said i couldn't even explain to her for her to for, for her to understand but i told her like this is what i'm doing like this is what i like and it led me to where I am now, right? And I know a lot of people want to do certain things, but have a lot of people outside of them tell them, don't do that, do this. At the end of the day, you have to do what makes you happy, right? Because if you follow everyone else's um, words and, and you end up somewhere where you're not happy, you have no one else to blame but yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, if it makes sense and it's rational, then do it, right? I'm not saying everyone to go start becoming rappers now, because <laughs> whatever, but I mean, if it makes sense and it's doable and you can be responsible as you do it, yeah. just just do do you for sure right. for sure yeah. some wise words there well that sure. wraps it up for our show today i'm i'm sure we can link something whether it's a, a way to contact you if they're ever for sure in, yeah, in Malton yeah. or whatever but before we go i just wanted to give you a word of encouragement because you always give me a oh, word of encouragement right. um this list is actually probably the longest one i've made for a guest so far so oh, um but you know firstly i f- like you have a wisdom that i don't think you give yourself credit for like you are able to not just help youth, but you're able to help people of diverse backgrounds and age and life circumstances. So you are a very wise man, oh, sure a is. very yi- a wise young man. So not too many people I know your age are able to counsel people who are older than them. Like mm. you just, you look at a situation, you take in all the facts, you you consider it, and then you just, like you're not that kind of person where I'm like, boom, 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 boom. I even have to f- catch myself and be like, yo, trying to, Try try not to always sound like you're super woke. Like yeah. allow the person to talk and yeah. just let them, you know, process it. But like you have you take it all in and you're just able to counsel and just speak into people's situation. And not even just like some fluffy, you know, yeah. you know, crap. Like you're you're going like and telling them actual facts. So I I, you know, I, I respect you for that and I appreciate that, man. I feel like you see the world um in a different way than most young people, like young men do especially. And like I you know, 
even though you told me about this, whatever your past, like when I first met you and even now to this day, like the purity of your heart and who you are as a person is like, like, yo, we'll be talking about something. And like, you're not like most guys who'd go like, you know, who talk bad or talk this or whatever like that. Like the way you see the world is, is very, very humble and very pure. So I, I respect that. Right. Um, you don't make excuses. You just get it done. And I try. anyone comes to you, like, if you can't do it, it's because you absolutely, like, there's something in your way stopping you. But your first response isn't no. Your first response is, like, let me see how I can do that. If I can't get it done, I'll find someone who could do it for you. So that's a, that's a quality I feel like is going to carry you into any endeavor that you do in your life. Thanks, man. Um, and, and even with that fact, any team, any organization, wherever you go, like, no one is ever going to be able to actually pay you the value of the work that like the worth that you are to that organization. Oh my gosh. So even though, even though you might be getting a certain pay, like if they had to pay you for what you were actually worth, they'd be oh, bankrupt. Hey. Um, and you know, on a personal level, you see me during some of my lowest days, like, you know, I've come to you and I'd be like, I'm stressed about this. And you know, this is what's going on in my personal life. But you know, I just wanted to thank you for being a listening ear and always having an encouraging word to say. And even if it's not that you have a word, you're that guy where I know that even if you're busy and I try to make sure that I don't cloud your day, but even if you're like two pages into your to-do list, you make time for me and you listen to me. And I, I just, I respect that because you'll, like we said, time is valuable, but yeah. I know that for you, your concern is like, Hey, I can worry about this or I can make an investment into this person's life. And I've come a number of times. Like I told you, I gotta be paying you counseling. Nah, fees. I come anytime, man. <laughs> Door is always open, man. But, um, but you know, I just wanted to thank you for that, and and I and I'm I'm really excited to see you grow over these next few years, and and lastly, like I just wish you nothing but the best for your marriage with you and Mel, and right. not just not just you know the the here and now, but even into into the future when you become a fa you're gonna make a great dad, man. Like when ah, you become sure. a father, I hope so, man. You know so. he's gonna go league and basketball. That's or, the plan. What? Okay, you're a soccer and a basketball guy. What would you prefer? Both. <laughs> yeah, if I had like a son and a daughter, or two sons, or yeah, two daughters, I'm out here matter. talking like you're only gonna have a son. Like you could have a daughter. Oh, too. That's the plan. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But whatever, if I, I'm, I'm trying, if God willing, I have two kids and and I can have one do each. Then yeah, we go one in the NBA and one that's the legacy in piece. Yeah, that's the piece. <laughs> and then I can retire at 40, 45, and yeah, have my kids make us money. That's for sure, plan. for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I always joke. I'm like, there was my sister, there was me, and then. Josh was like six years later. I'm like, you realize, mom, you realize, Josh, that mom only made you because we wanted someone to make us yeah, tea. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call him our chai wala. That's how Indian people say. Oh, but, man. but yeah, man, I just wanted to thank you so much for being on the show today. Anytime, like, anytime, trust man. me, you're not doing me a favor. Like, 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 sorry, I'm not doing you a favor. Like, you're doing me a favor. Like, oh, you're man. elevating. I know that the people who are blessed by your life are going to even be even more blessed. And I just wanted to thank you. Like even just the vulnerability and pouring out your life is not an easy thing. And it's not something that it's not that we don't want people to know, but it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you just showing no. that, that background lens on Chris Apoku today. Man. No problem. Anytime. Man. I yeah. appreciate the time. I appreciate this. It's, it's a really good, it's a really good thing, man. Sure, I'm happy man. I'm here. Appreciate it. All right. So that wraps up our show. Like I said, anything Chris Scott's going on, I'll drop it down in the description yeah. um, and go check him out. Go support him. And, you know, he's going to be doing big things for Malton and uh, even past Peel region and whatever. But um, Chris, thanks for being on the show today. Anytime. man. Thanks, man. Happy to be here.